So in a broad sense, before we talk about neuroevolution, evolution, do you see evolutionary computation as more effective than deep learning in certain contexts? Mm. Uh, machine learning, broadly speaking, mm. uh, maybe even supervised machine learning. I don't know if you want to draw any kind of lines and distinctions and borders where they rub up against each other kind of thing, where one is more effective than the other in the current state of things. Yes, of course, they are very different and they uh, address different kinds of problems. And um, the deep learning uh, has been really successful in domains where we have a lot of data. Um, and that means not just situ data about situations, but also what the right answers were. Mm -hmm. uh, so labeled examples, or they might be predictions, maybe weather prediction where the data itself uh, becomes labels. What happened, what the weather was today and what it will, it will be tomorrow. Um, so they are very effective deep learning methods on, on that kind of tasks. Uh, but there are other kinds of tasks where we don't really know what the right answer is. Uh, game playing, for instance, but um, many robotics tasks and uh, actions in the world, uh, decision making, um, and, and actual pra practical applications like treatments and healthcare or investment in stock market. Many tasks are like that. We will we don't know and we'll never know what the optimal answers were. And there you need different kinds of approaches. Reinforcement learning is one of those. Uh, reinforcement learning comes from biology as well. Uh, agents learn during their lifetime. They eat berries and sometimes they get sick and then they don't and get stronger. Uh, and then that's how you learn. Uh, and evolution is also a mechanism um, like that, um, but a different time scale because you have a population, not an individual during its lifetime, but an entire population as a whole can discover um, what works. And there you can afford individuals that don't work out they will, you know, everybody dies and you have a ne next generation and it will be better than the previous one. So that's that's the big difference between these methods. They apply to different kinds of problems. Um, and um, in particular, there's often a comparison that's kind of in interesting and important between reinforcement learning and evolutionary computation. Um, and initially, um, reinforcement learning was about individual learning during the lifetime. And evolution is more engineering. You don't care about the lifetime. You don't care about all the individuals that are tested. You only care about the final result, the last one, the best um, candidate that evolution produced. Uh, in that sense, they also apply to different kinds of problems. And now that boundary is starting to um, blur a bit. You can use evolution as an online method and reinforcement learning to create engineering solutions, but that's still roughly the distinction. Uh, and um, from the point of view of what algorithm you want to use, if you have something where there is a cost for every trial, reinforcement learning might be your choice. Uh, now, if you have a domain where you can use a surrogate, perhaps, um, so you don't have much of a cost uh, for trial, uh, and you want to have surprises, you want to explore more broadly, then this population-based method uh, is um, perhaps a better choice because you you can try things out that you wouldn't afford when you're doing reinforcement. 